up everyone and welcome to Movie Important's TV review of Snowpiercer Season 1 Episode 3 Access is Power. Uh, before we begin, please hit that subscribe button to join Movie Important, hit that notification bell at the top to find us coming next, and uh, comment below on any videos you watch, including this one. So this episode is basically procedural crime drama part two. Uh, they're dealing with a drug called Kronos, and if we know anything about procedural crime dramas or just crime dramas in general, there's always that drug angle that they put into a tv series like this especially on tnt you know you have the week by week you know drug induced situation and so that's what's happening here like i said chronos is the big situation in here uh we find out that sean who was the guy that was killed was one of the janitors uh janitors are you know what they are janitors or whatever but there's a character named terrence who actually has a hold of where zara is being basically working as a you know whatever she's working as and so he has information and of course the guy the security guard who gave the drugs to the guy in the tail section they are in cahoots they are learning about andre and andre is getting closer and closer to figuring out what this is but he wants to make sure that you know the people in the tail section are doing all right he wants to make sure zara is doing all right so on and so forth but the big revelation in this is sean who was killed was with a first class passenger who that first class passenger isn't really revealed i don't even know if it's revealed at the end when we find out the killer I, I guess he may be the killer it's not really explained very well but we basically have the situation the, you know they're going after you know andre still dealing with the the ramifications of what he did in the last episode with trying to give information to the people in the tail section and so on and so forth this leads him to him talking to terrence and getting information about of course the the first class passengers and then we have the first class passengers who are giving more and more looks and appreciation to their character arcs and stuff like that and it's another point of what is going to happen when this series starts to get into the later parts of the season where the revolution is going to take effect it's going to take a hold and the rich people know it's going to happen they know that andre the tail section guy is investigating they know that they have a lot of power and they know that they're going to use that power to whatever means necessary but i like the idea of these characters so up their own butts that they are going to risk life and limb to get rid of the tail section there's actually a point in this episode where the ramifications of that you know avalanche or whatever have come full circle where the heating and air and stuff like that is being affected by the tail section so they're talking about maybe cutting the tail section which would leave all the taily people dead from the freezer and exposure and stuff like that and the for the rich people have no issues with this it's like in titanic you know they don't care about you know the fact that like the billy zane character doesn't care about the people that you know are in the third class and second class he's trying to save himself and that's what they're trying to do and it's really kind of it's sad and depressing but it is the way of the world this is a very social political show that is taking ideas and ideologies and thrusting it forward into a train setting but I like also that we get a little more kind of why Zara left Andre to go up to what she's doing now. I like the whole ring situation, the wrong, the whole ring scenario where she's, he gave he gives it to her to use his barter, use his leverage. And in the process, she gives it back to him to do the same thing. You know, we're finally seeing why Zara left the car, how the tail section was very against it, how they basically tagged her as a traitor for leaving but she was doing what she thought was best the whole idea of their son is basically a son or daughter is brought into the mix and andre realizes he can't do anything about it so he is going to take care of who he needs to take care of is basically explain that he is needs to take care of the tail section why you know zara keeps doing what she's doing i i like also that andre is starting to get a little bit of freedom to do what he needs to do he's also throwing in some requests that if he doesn't get it done he will uh basically not do what he needs to do which is 
a very contentious relationship with the Melanie character, Jennifer Connelly's character. But he basically goes and once he learns that Miles has been accepted into apprenticeship, he goes and visits Miles. Miles tells him how happy he is. And this is why he wants to go talk to Miles' mom, who he has a relationship with, and explain to her that Miles is doing all right. And I just like the idea that they're able to kind of give Andre some stuff why he's helping them out so it's a really kind of nice like leeway situation he's starting to become friends with a couple of the security officers and the head of the security department Bess is also kind of his right hand woman now which is kind of nice so there's a there's a very good uh structure to this show as it's going forward Nikki who's the girl who's the basically the lead informant to the first murder the situation of what's going on she is wake, awake, but she's out of it. She looks like she's in uh, on full of drugs, which she is. The Henry Klimp character, Happy Anderson's character, basically reveals to Andre and Bess that he uh, has been giving her drugs, has been keeping her under. And basically, she's uh, recovering from a drug addiction, so on and so forth, you know, from being kept under. And we realize that the, the drug of uh, Kronos is much more prevalent in this situation that is being spread all over the place and so we have another really cool kind of setup and this is I, it makes me feel like that was for andre to get the kind of information with he did to kind of figure out who the janitors are to get them all together to talk to terrence which leads into the eventual conclusion of that the first class passengers killed sean and we basically see a fr uh, like a friday night fight a fight between two people and Melanie, with the help of Wilford, who's just heard by voice, we're getting a little bit more information on him, uh, basically allows the first class to watch, the second class and third class, but the people are fighting, whoever wins will be moved up to the second class, so it's really interesting. But what makes the fight unique is because even though if it's first class, second th class, or third class, everybody loves a good battle royale everybody loves a good fight they love blood you know bloodletting and you know beating people up so the first class is excited as the second class is which is excited as the third class and it just it shows you kind of the dichotomy of even though one person is richer than the other they all like the idea of this you know archaic games and so on and so forth but it leads into like chaos and so on and so forth. You know, the LJ Folger character with her father and mother are basically brought into the mix. Uh, they are really kind of, like I said, the main focus, the main plot of the first class people. And they are uh, basically the ones that are like the voice of the first class. So it's really interesting. It's interesting to see LJ's characters once again, not really utilized, but we see her kind of you know, give a small little wave to Andre's character, which could be play out in some form or fashion later on. But the big revelation is Nikki's character wakes up and she's still recovering, but she's kind of fully awake now. And we see a security guard outside protecting her and so on and so forth. There's a uh, doctor inside, you know, checking whatever doing. And one of these, somebody comes up and basically just kills the security guard, kills the doctor and walks in the room with Nikki and uh, it's Eric. And Eric, of course, is the guard for LJ's character. And what's interesting about that is Eric was one of those characters that you could almost see coming as the villain of the series. He has the gun, he's very headstrong, he's like forceful when he talks and I think the first episode or whatever episode he's in. But it, it can almost kind of come out of nowhere because it's like, okay so what is, what is his logic and reasoning what is his point to his character because the episode ends with him going you don't know who i am or you don't remember me but you know who i am so eric as a, a villain could be interesting but does that mean he's like what is his motives what is his logic and reasoning does he have similar motives to something like murder on the Orient express where he has a similar back history to something where it entails nikki as a character but like I said, he's probably that first class passenger that killed Sean because Sean was an informant for Wilford. But it also leads into the mystery of what does Eric know? Is he willing to protect Wilford? Is he an informant? Is he, is he Wilford's son? Is he Wilford? I mean, nobody really knows what his character is after this episode. But you got to leave some substance and some mystery and some, you know, wonderment of who Eric is. And at this moment, he just has a bludgeoning hammer that he just beats the hell out of people with. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do with this character. Um, it did, like I said, come a little surprising, but not really with his character being 
the possible murder of Sean. So we'll see how it works out. We'll see how his character plays out as they start developing and start using him more in the episode. And maybe only last until next week. I don't know. But at this point, it's going to be interesting to see if they can develop his character. So, but that's pretty much it on this episode. It's not really too much else more to talk about. I think it was a fun episode. I think it's best, definitely the best episode of the series so far. Um, I just think it's the, the development of all the characters. I think, once again, the actors are still top-notch. I still think the direction is top-notch. I still think the visual effects suck, but that's just a TV series in general. Um, but one, this is a kind of propulsion episode that's going to give us a lot more information leading forward. It's starting to open up doors that we were kind of wondering after the first two episodes. But what is it going to do? How is it going to interact with the entire series? That remains to be seen because there's still uh, seven more episodes to go on this uh, season. So we'll see what happens. But there you go. So that's it. That's my take on Access's Power, which is the third episode of season one of Snowpiercer. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think of this episode. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Also, you know what? Hit the like and dislike button. If you like the video, cool. If you dislike it, cool as well. But otherwise, hit the subscribe button to join Movie Emporium. Hit that notification bell at the top to find what's coming next. Comment below on any video that you watch, including this one. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace out. What's up, guys? Thank you so much for checking out Movie Emporium. I really appreciate it. If you want to, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification button and the bell at the top. Find out what's coming next for Movie Emporium. Also, check out these two videos. They're amazing. I think they're awesome. I think you'll enjoy them too. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.